Hello and welcome to a new episode of Better Italian. Today we're going to learn Italian adjectives. And we're going to look at 25 adjectives. And we're going to learn them and we're going to learn many other words while we do that. So there's a lot to unpack. So take your time and we'll come in. We'll start. Bello. Beautiful. Ho letto un libro molto bello. I read a very beautiful book. In una bella casa si vive meglio. In a beautiful house one lives better. I bambini sono tutti belli. All children are beautiful. In Toscana ci sono delle belle colline. In Tuscany there are some beautiful hills. So already we have quite a few things to talk about. First of all, you have probably learned that in Italian the adjectives come after the nouns. But this, you can already see, it's not always true. Sometimes the adjectives comes before the noun. So we're going to look at more examples and I'm going to explain to you why this happens. Sometimes, I have to be honest with you, I don't know why that's the case. It just sounds better. Okay. But we're going to look at some more examples where it's clear. In this case, um, to put the adjectives after would sound not very well. Okay, to say in una casa bella si vive meglio, you can say it, but it's better to say in una bella casa. And the same here. In Toscana ci sono delle colline belle, doesn't sound very well, doesn't sound very good, sorry. But if you say delle belle colline, now it sounds very well or very good. Okay, then another thing. I bambini sono tutti belli. All children are beautiful. Notice how here I put tu tutti um, before the adjective. I could have put it here, for example. Could I have done that and say tutti i bambini sono belli? What do you think? Um, Italian is a very flexible language. And I could have very well have put tutti right here. Tutti i bambini sono belli. I bambini sono tutti belli. The sentences, the two sentences here are the same. Same meaning, same everything. They just sound the same. So, yeah, that's just um, um, a feature of Italian. It's very flexible. Right, let's continue. Brutto. Ugly. Bad. È stato un brutto sogno. It was a bad dream. Here again. See? Un brutto sogno. I can explain this to you. It's very uh, intuitive also, perhaps. If I say, è stato un sogno brutto, and è stato un brutto sogno, there's a huge difference in meaning. If I say, un sogno brutto, it means that the dream was ugly. It was an interesting, it was boring. But if I say un brutto sogno, it means that it was a bad dream, it was a nightmare. Okay, so there's a huge difference here if I put the adjective before or after the noun. Ha fatto una brutta impressione. He made a bad impression. Even here, brutta impressione. This is because this is a set expression. We don't say un'impressione brutta. We don't really say that. We say una brutta impressione. Okay. Il cinema, al cinema è pieno di film brutti. The cinema is full of bad films. Le tue scarpe sono brutte. Your shoes are ugly. Buono. Good. È un uomo buono. He's a good man. La torta è molto buona. The cake is very good. Babbo Natale porta regali ai bambini buoni. Santa Claus brings gift to good children. Babbo Natale is our Santa Claus. 
or Father Christmas. Impara le buone maniere. Learn good manners. So here we have, first of all, the verb at the imperative form. And we have a set expression. Le buone maniere. Good manners. Always like this. Never le maniere buone. That's another meaning. Le buone maniere is good manners. Cattivo. Bad. Non dare il cattivo esempio. Don't be bad. Uh, particularly would literally mean don't give a bad example. Or don't be a bad example. Okay. La zuppa è cattiva. The soup is bad. Gli animali non sono cattivi. Animals are not bad. Cerca di non avere cattive abitudini. Try not to have bad habits. Here again, abitudini cattive doesn't make much sense. So we say cattive abitudini, bad habits. And cercare here is a synonym. You can also use provare, tentare. All these words are fine to mean try. Let's try. Cercare di, provare, a. Okay, so the preposition also changes whether you use one verb or another. Duro, hard or tough. Il marmo è duro. Marble is hard. La vita è dura. Life is hard. Siete degli ossi duri. You're tough. Here, ossi duri is an expression that means that someone is very tough, uh, can come out of hardship as a winner. Okay, they're very resistant. They're very strong. Le caramelle sono diventate dure. The candy became hard. Morbido, soft. Il letto è così morbido. The bed is so soft. È morbida al tatto. It's soft to the touch. Tatto is one of the seven senses. Ok? To the touch. Questa è la ricetta per dei biscotti morbidi. This is the recipe for soft cookies. Le albicocche sono morbide. Apricots are soft. Felice. Happy. Si felice. Be happy. Yes, the double I is meant to be there. Si felice. It's the imperative form. Si felice. Be happy. Lei è sempre felice. She's always happy. Fa pensieri felici. Think happy thoughts. Here, imperative. Le bambine sono felici. The girls are happy. Have you noticed something here? When an adjective ends in E, the masculine and the feminine form are the same. See? Si? Triste. Here again. Notice they are the same. Triste means sad. Perché sei triste? Why are you sad? La maestra è triste. The teacher is sad. Anche i bambini possono essere tristi. Children can also be sad. Ci sono tante persone tristi. There are many sad people. Long. Lungo. Il treno è molto lungo. The train is very long. Non farla tanto lunga. Don't make a big deal out of it. What does this mean? Non farla tanto lunga. It means that someone is complaining a lot and is constantly talking about something that happened as if it was the biggest disaster that has ever hit a person. Okay? Um, 
and when it's obviously not the case, maybe it's something very banal, something very trivial, and they just talk and talk and complain about it as if it was a complete disaster. So we say, non farla tanto lunga, don't make a big deal out of it. I serpenti possono diventare molto lunghi. Snakes can become very long. Le ore sembrano più lunghe del solito. The hours seem longer than usual. Corto, short. Il mio cane ha il pelo corto. Ok, here the translation is just not correct. So, I'm going to translate it for you right now. Il mio cane ha il pelo corto, it means that my dog has short fur or short hair. Ok, pelo is the fur. La fila è corta. The queue is short. Or the line is short. Simone ha i capelli corti. Uh, Simone has short hair. Plural. I capelli corti. Le filastrocche sono corte. Le filastrocche is a type of poem, I could say. Some sort of um, a mixture between a poem and a lullaby. Okay. Stanco. Tired. Il bambino è stanco di correre. The child is tired of running. Sono stanca. I'm tired. A sera siamo stanchi. In the evening we are tired. Le persone sono stanche dei politici. People are tired of politicians. So it could be tired physically or tired as if you've had enough of something or someone. Ricco, rich. È un piatto ricco di fibre. It's a dish full of fibers. Mia zia è una ricca imprenditrice. My aunt is a rich entrepreneur. Non tutti sono ricchi. Not everyone is rich. Le banane sono ricche di potassio. Bananas are rich in potassium. Povero, poor. Povero ragazzo. Poor guy. Okay, in this case it doesn't mean that the, the guy in question doesn't have money. It just means that we pity them or whether we feel empathy towards them. L'insalata è povera di grassi. Salad is poor in fat. I miei genitori sono stati poveri. My parents have been poor. Le persone povere hanno bisogno di aiuto. Poor people need help. Grande. Big. Lui è il più grande dei tre fratelli. He's the oldest of the three brothers. Vive in una casa molto grande. She lives in a very big house. I gatti hanno gli occhi grandi. Cats have big eyes. Le grandi scienziate non sono famose. Great female scientists are not famous. So here, again, adjective before the noun. That's because if we were to say le scienziate grandi non sono famose, it would mean the scientists who are big are not famous. So those who are big physically. And that's absolutely not what we want to say. We want to say that not the scientists who are big in size, or they are, they're not huge, right? That great. So it's not literally big or grandi, not literally. So we put it before the noun to mean not big, but great. So great female scientists, le grandi scienziate. Piccolo, small. Il mondo è piccolo. The world is small. Siamo una piccola nazione. 
We are a small nation. Ho due piccoli suggerimenti. I have two small suggestions. Stanotte ho fatto le ore piccole. I stayed up late last night. Here we have an idiomatic expression. Le ore piccole. This refers to hours such as 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. Okay, they are small because the numbers are very small, 1, 2, 3. Um, and it just means that I, you were up very late in the, in the night, uh, up to the early morning. So up to those hours, like 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. So stanotte ho fatto le ore piccole means I stayed up late last night. Nuovo, new. Hai un nuovo messaggio. You have a new message. Ho comprato una macchina nuova. I bought a new car. I temi non sono nuovi. The topics are not new. Abbiamo bisogno di nuove idee. We need new ideas. Here again, nuovo and nuove come before the noun. Um, why is that? Well, it's because we don't want to stress too much that the, the message or that the ideas are new. We want to stress the message, that you have a, new, a message and that we need ideas. If instead I were to say, hai un messaggio nuovo, it would mean that the peculiar thing about this message is that it's new, not that you have a message to read. And here, again, if I say, abbiamo bisogno di idee nuove, I'm stressing that the ideas, we, we can have many ideas, but what we want is new ideas, and I'm really stressing it. Abbiamo bisogno di idee nuove. If instead I don't want to stress it so much, and what I want to stress is that we need ideas, I can say, abbiamo bisogno di nuove idee. Vecchio, old. È un mio vecchio amico. He's an old friend of mine. Here again. Here, you can probably hear it. There's a huge difference if I say, è un mio vecchio amico, and è un mio amico vecchio. Huge difference. Um, if I say, un mio vecchio amico, it just means he's an old friend of mine. But if I say, un amico vecchio, it means that this friend of mine is old. Which is not what I want to say right now. È un tipo vecchia scuola. He's an old school kind of guy. So tipo is a word that we use to mean a random guy. And vecchia scuola is an expression that means old school or old style. I miei genitori sono vecchi. My parents are old. Sono vecchie storie. These are old stories. It means that they're not relevant anymore. Not that they're necessarily old, but that they're not relevant. So again, it's not literal, so we put it before the noun. Giusto, right or fair. Severo ma giusto. Harsh but fair. Fai la scelta giusta. Make the right choice. I consigli devono essere giusti. Advices must be right. Scrivi le risposte giuste. Write the correct answers. Sbagliato. Wrong. Ti comporti in modo sbagliato. You behaved or you behave wrongly. La risposta è sbagliata. The answer is wrong. Non dare consigli sbagliati. Don't give wrong advices. Ha fatto tante cose sbagliate. He has made many wrong things. Aperto. Open. Sono un libro aperto. I'm an open book. This is an idiomatic expression, but it's well translatable 
between English and Italian. It just means the same. La mia porta è sempre aperta. My door is always open. Tieni gli occhi ben aperti. Keep your eyes wide open. Non lasciare le finestre aperte. Don't leave the windows open. Notice how when we use the imperative in the negative form, we use non plus the infinitive. Non lasciare. That's the imperative in the negative form. Chiuso. Closed. L'argomento è chiuso. The topic is closed. Tieni la bocca chiusa. Keep your mouth shut. La gente si bacia ad occhi chiusi. People kiss with closed eyes. Non mi piacciono le menti chiuse. I don't like close minds or close minded people. Veloce. Fast. Come sei veloce? You're so fast. Elisa è più veloce di me. Elisa is faster than me. I giamaicani sono i più veloci. Jamaicans are the fastest. Anche le ragazze sono veloci. Girls are fast too. Here I want to discuss with you the positioning of anche. If I say, anche le ragazze sono veloci, I want to say the girls are fast too. But if I were to say, le ragazze sono anche veloci, what would I mean with that? Would the meaning change in your opinion? Le ragazze sono anche veloci. This would mean that girls are also fast, but it means that they have Among all the many other positive things that girls have, on top of that, they're also fast, which is not exactly what I want to say right now. So, le ragazze sono anche veloci, but they're also intelligent, smart, pretty, and so on. But if I say, anche le ragazze sono veloci, I mean that boys are fast, but girls are fast too. Okay, it's a slight difference in meaning. Lento. Slow. Sei troppo lento. You're too slow. È un piatto a cottura lenta. It's a slow cooked dish. I vecchi sono lenti. Old people are slow. Le tartarughe sono lente. Turtles are slow. Caldo. Hot or warm. Il fuoco è caldo. Fire is hot. Hai la fronte calda. Your forehead is warm. Dal sud vengono venti caldi. From the south come hot winds. Le notti d'estate sono calde. Summer nights are warm. Freddo. Cold. L'inverno è freddo. Winter is cold. È una persona fredda. He's a cold person. Gli inverni sono freddi. Winters are cold. Le notti d'inverno sono fredde. Winter nights are cold. Okay, so this was 25 adjectives in Italian. It's the first part of learning new Italian adjectives. We're going to take a break here and then continue with the next video. Okay, we'll see each other with the next video. It will come out uh, hopefully very soon and we'll see each other there. Bye!